What's up my producer friends, it's David with another MonsterProductions.com. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to chop up samples and loops inside FL Studio. There's actually many different ways to do this within FL Studio, but the technique that I wanna share with you today is something that I've recently been experimenting with that for me personally allows me to get creative in a completely different way than I normally would if I were just coming up with my own melodies. And so I think it's just another really useful trick that you guys can use and come up with really cool and unique melodies and chord progressions. The main plugin we're going to be using today is SliceX, which comes with the producer edition of FL Studio. So as long as you have at least that edition of FL Studio, you should be able to follow along with pretty much everything in the tutorial. I think later on we'll probably use Grosspeed as well just to experiment with some different things. But there are alternatives out there to Grosspeed if you don't have it. It comes with the signature edition of FL Studio. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. All right, so if you're going to start with a sample, you're actually going to have to turn your sample into a loop and then essentially follow along with the rest of the steps of this tutorial. So let me just real quick show you kind of how you would do that. So you can drag your sample directly into the playlist. This is how I would recommend doing it. And then you're gonna to need to find the tempo of your sample and try and match it as close as you can to your current project. And then the easiest way to do it is just to come in here and kind of chop it uh, this is assuming that it's the same tempo. I'm not gonna do that because I'm just trying to kind of show you how to do this real quick. But assuming that this loop actually made sense and was the right tempo, we could come in here and we could basically just make unique as sample. And this is going to bring up an option where we can actually save the sample as a certain name and then it's its own unique loop. Uh, and then we can go from there. So for this particular tutorial, what I wanna actually do is use one of my 10 melody loops for trap and R&B. This is actually a little loop kit that I've been putting together for a while. Uh, it's just 10 simple basic loops, which are available on my website if you guys wanna check that out. Uh, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of the video if you guys want to get that. But let's go ahead and choose this loop here, Heartbreak, and I'm just gonna drag it onto the playlist. And we're actually already at the right BPM. It's at 150 BPM. So once you've got your loop loaded up into the playlist in FL Studio and it's set to the proper tempo, go ahead and click this button here, go down to channel settings, and then right down here, uh, the waveform, let's go ahead and right click this and go down to open in new SliceX channel. So that should bring SliceX up, which should look something like this. Right now it's got a lot of different markers and this could be fun to experiment with. If you have a MIDI keyboard set up, you can mess with the keys, which can be fun. You can come up with some cool stuff. Right now I'm using the Akai Fire, which is a controller that actually is integrated with FL Studio. So it makes it super easy to mess with this stuff. But what I actually wanna do with this loop right now is make this super simple. So let me get rid of that. I'm gonna click this button here, Regions. It's gonna drop down and I want to go to Auto Slice. We're gonna do Dull Auto Slicing. So this is gonna give us four basic chops. And you can actually go in here and mess with them. They have three options. You have Medium Auto Slicing, which is gonna give you, I think, pretty much what it automatically loads up as default. And then you could also go to uh, sharp auto slicing, which is gonna do a lot more. So depending on the sample or loop, that may be something you want to experiment with. It might be kind of cool. Let's go ahead and go back into dull auto slicing. And now we just have four chops. So at this point, if you have a MIDI keyboard, it's really easy to experiment. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard, that's fine. You could just click these here. Or you could just go directly into the piano roll and we could either get rid of those or just go to a new pattern and kind of mess with it this way. And I already kind of came up with something in my head. So this part of the loop right here, what I'm hearing in my head is basically only the first part of this loop. Uh, I don't want those extra notes that go up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch this part out. So make sure that this is highlighted. 
if you hit your MIDI controller, it should automatically highlight it. If you don't have a MIDI controller or if it doesn't for some reason, you can go up here to where it says markers in the region settings and you can just click it that way and that will highlight it for you. So once you have it highlighted, you can hover over this button here. This is our drum loop stretch fill gaps time stretch button. So you can click that or just hit control T and it'll bring it up. And now we want to actually stretch this sample out. So first of all, make sure that the method is set to stretch. Uh, it's going to make sure it actually stretches it out. All right. So up here we have our time multiplier. You can adjust this to change the uh, time of it. So we could also do it in milliseconds. So 1,583 milliseconds is like 1.5 seconds. So I could turn this to about six seconds. Let's hit accept, see what happens. Okay, so that lengthens it out. So then, so then I can go back in here. So now I gotta fix this. That's one thing that you can do with Slice X to sort of make this different. So I'd recommend uh, you go ahead and hit Control T, go back in here and just experiment with some of the different things that this can do. For example, Echo Grains is pretty cool. If we set this to 6,000, uh, let's hit Accept. It's kind of a cool different effect, so. So just experiment with that, have fun with it. You can come up with some pretty cool out of the box stuff. Okay, so once you've come up with your loop, in the piano roll and plotted it out. Uh, the next thing that you might want to experiment with is adding some effects on it. So I'm gonna get rid of the audio of the original loop that I just had there, and I'm gonna add my new pattern on the playlist. All right, so then I wanna go back into my channel settings. We can click this up here and we can go ahead and route to a free mixer track. So now it's linked to a free mixer track and we can start adding some effects. I'm gonna mess with uh, gross beat first, see what we can come up with here. Um, I think it might be kind of cool to add some sort of flanging effect. Okay, cool. So what I can do here, go into our playlist. We're just going to highlight the area where we have our loop going on right now. And I'm going to automate the volume or the dry wet on off of the gross beat here. So I just right click that, go to create automation clip. So I'm gonna have it off here and probably off there. And then it's gonna come on and then I'm gonna do something like this kinda. Now we're getting kind of a click. So I'm just gonna do this type of a thing. So that's kind of cool. We can even go more with it. All right, let's go ahead and add some reverb. Just stock settings. Let's add a delay three. Let's go ahead and move the tone down, get a little ping pong. I'm gonna do the same thing here where I automate this dry wet knob and I'm just going to have it on this first hit and then I'll bring it down.
Okay, cool. So once we've added enough effects onto this to a point where we're pretty happy with the way that it's sounding, the next thing that I would do is go in here and go ahead and convert this to an audio clip. So you can go into your MIDI over here, right click it and go to quick render as audio clip and that will render it as an audio clip and then we can just bring that onto the playlist, get rid of the MIDI, get rid of the automation. All right, now we have another audio clip, which is essentially our new loop that we could potentially repeat the process if we wanted to or add more effects onto it, whatever we want to do at this stage. Okay, cool. So this loop is sounding pretty nice in my opinion. Uh, what I want to do is mess with the pitch potentially. So uh, we're going to bring that down. I'm also going to go ahead and change the tempo. Uh, let's do like 125 and then we're going to have to restretch the audio out to fit the grid. Okay, cool. So that sounds nice. Uh, another thing we could do now that I've pitched it down a little bit, click this button, go down to make unique and we have a unique sample and then I can pitch this one up an octave. So it would be 900 cents. And then I could route this to a free mixer track. Uh, I could add like a stereo shaper on it. If you guys want to learn how to use a stereo shaper, uh, I actually just did a tutorial on it, which you can check out. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description as well as on the screen now. But one preset that I like to use a lot is Stereoize 3 or 2. Let's try 3 for this one. And then I'm doing a little bit of panning there. can make it even wider. So obviously in this tutorial, I'm going through a, a couple of cool ideas that you can do. I'd recommend you actually get in here, uh, spend more time messing around with gross beat, spend more time messing around with slice X, trying to really think outside the box and come up with something cool. For the sake of this tutorial, I don't wanna spend too much time like experimenting with stuff. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. But first let's see if we can make a beat out of this. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That's gonna let you know anytime I release videos in the future. Right now I'm doing tutorials about once a week and those usually come out on Friday or Saturday. So keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions about anything or tutorial requests, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at anothermonster1. Also, if you feel like you're really struggling with music production, sound design, anything in between, and you feel like you just need a little bit of extra help, I am doing one one-on-one -on -one private lessons, which you can sign up for on my website at anothermonsterproductions.com. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to sign up for that. And while you're there, be sure to take advantage of the free stuff I'm giving away in the description of this video as well. I've got a sample pack and an ebook, which you can download for free. You just need to enter your email address and I'll send that stuff over to you. And as always, I will see you in the next video.